things, the title of the welcoming message for you baptismal candidates is how to live your new life. So I think it's on the screen right now, how to live your new life. So I would just plead with this church, give me about five to ten minutes and we'll be done. How to live your new life, so how to live your new life in Christ. I don't know why it's like this, but um, it's supposed to look nice. I would like to talk to you about a few things. And as I'm talking to you about a few things, as well the church can listen to these, perhaps those who have made a recommitment to serve Jesus again. You are the newest babies in town. Actually, um, we always talk about angels rejoicing. So I'm trying to find out where the rejoicing will go on. Perhaps um, in the kingdom of God, it's called Street Number New Life Avenue at this time. Right? John 3 verse 5 says that no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and of the spirit. So today, you have been born of the water and we believe, because all of you were fasting throughout throughout the week, preparing for your baptism, asking the Lord to take care of you, asking the Holy Spirit to be upon you, so we believe the Holy Spirit is on you. Now, Sister Carol, you said that you didn't feel anything. It's, It's okay. That is how baptism is, actually. Because like I said at the beginning, there's no magical thing in the baptism. But there's a change that has occurred. So, walking with Christ, a new life, may not necessarily, you may not feel anything, but there's a fact. It's a fact, and there's something that has happened. But what does it mean to be born again? What does it mean to be a new person? Being born again means you're a new person. So it's not just a feeling you, that you must feel, it's a fact that you must believe. If you don't believe it, then it does, it does not happen. It's something you need to believe and have faith because faith is the substance of things not yet seen. So you've not seen anything, but you need to believe it for it to occur, right? Um, and when you believe it, you need to ask the question, why do I need to believe it? Second Corinthians 5 verse 17 says, anyone... Anyone, man, woman, you know, child, boy, son, anyone who is in Christ is like saying anyone who has been baptized is now what? A new what? Creation. The old life has gone and the new life has begun. So you need to believe it. Because you have been baptized, you've become new, you need to believe it, you need to accept it, you don't have to feel it. Salvation and faith is not about feeling. I want to say it again. You don't feel like praying, so what? You don't feel like praying, so what? You don't feel like going to church, so what? You just need to go to church. You need to pray because if, if it's about feeling, you're just listening to the enemy speaking to you. Say, ah, you don't feel, don't pray. And then you continue not feeling for a long time. And so, and, um, being baptized, you have not just become born again, you now belong to Christ. You belong to Christ and you're a new creation, so you have been recreated. That's what a new creation means. And and your old life has passed away. Does it mean that you not have (laughs) temptations? No, that's not what it means. But your new life has started. Now, Ellen White said something. Um, and I think you see it on the screen. Um, as Christians submit to the solemn rite of baptism, Christ registers the vow, the vow you made, that they make to be true to him. This vow is an oath of allegiance. Now, they are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thus, they are united in the three great powers of heaven. The pledge themselves to renounce the word and to observe the laws of the kingdom of God. Henceforth, they are to work in newness of life. That's why, that's why the title is How do you now walk in the new life that Christ has given to you? No longer are they to the traditions of men, 
no longer they produce for the servants, they are now to obey the service of the kingdom of heaven. If they have seek us honor, if they will be true to their power, they will furnish grace and power that enable them to fulfill all righteousness. Now she adds, as many as receive him to them, he gave the power to become sons and daughters of God, even to them to that believe in his name. So, now if you remove faith from the side, you believe. And because of that belief and that faith, you get a power to become a child of God. And that is the reason why Paul was saying that we can approach the throne of God with grace, with, 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 without just being shy, just go there, you know, without anything. And they say, have a father. Now, how do we start to do that? You do not start it. He has to make it come. The very moment you got baptized, you go. You leave it by next time you decide to continue the journey with Jesus Christ. A journey with Christ or walking with Jesus does not mean you may not fall. In fact, I can't remember what's the man. I can't remember. You have three children. I tell you, when you leave here, those kids make you be very angry. You say, ah, when I just got baptized, you become angry. You think you don't get angry, you get angry to the living house. In fact, uh, Sister Pauline, someone at the workplace may make me feel bad. Brother Lawrence, when you're playing football with the guys, what do they don't cost you? They make the happiness to see my mind. And brother, yeah. Maybe your cousin gets angry with you, or somebody your father, whatever. So the thing is, if you see somebody, you would feel that something is not right here. You feel the temptation. No, that's what it is. Because even Christ himself was not tempted in all ways that we are going to be tempted. So, like I said, does it mean that even if you fall to temptation, does it mean that you're not a new person? Falling is part of experience. So you see, Pastor, you see, three members, you see people who see people that are coming to stand here, you see that you're not Every person born into the kingdom of God should fall. Because if they don't fall, that means they should, they should be on earth. So falling is part of the experience just like babies. When babies get, you know, to be, when they are born, they let to fall. Then they let to stand. But when they stand, they start to fall. They stand, they fall. Then they start taking their first step. In taking their first step, they fall. They are so that they fall. Until their legs get strong. Dear friends and Christians, new God babies, don't be bad at yourself, be angry with yourself when in the next moment you fall, you are just like a baby. Let me explain to you. This past summer, um, I decided to, to help my brother to learn to ride a bicycle. One of the most annoying things is helping a child to learn to ride a bicycle. Very annoying. Another annoying thing is maybe if you're bad for me in Nigeria or any other place, you tell me why it's a dead child. Those are the most important two annoying things. We need grace in this. Now, what I notice is that my daughter would push, um, no, put her, she would cry and she would be happy and she would say, I said, I didn't even have. You know, I don't go to the thing anymore, I don't buy anymore. Right, so I give her, and then she says she falls down. And then she starts, she's what she she do? She starts focusing on holding her and on pushing or riding her. So when she's head at me, she's watching to see if I'm holding her. When I give her, she just maybe um, um, rides into a uh, flower or something or maybe hits something. If you focus on your body, you will make the house your husband. So I will tell my daughter, look at the road, look at the gates. You could have this um, um, place where you can have this uh, big space. Just look at the gates. Don't look behind, but look at me. Just believe me that I'm here. And look at the gates. It was so difficult to have to just 
keep her focus. Yes, friends? It's not about the fire, it's about the focus. What is your focus? Is your focus Jesus? If your focus is on Jesus, even when you fall, you know that somebody is behind you. And so she would believe that I'm behind her. If she keeps her eyes on the gates, she would be able to write at least for a minute. The temptations, the folly, or whatever you come to sight, you are a new Christian. It takes one step after the other. In fact, Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17 talks about the fact that the righteousness of Christ is revealed from what? From one level of faith to another level of faith. Yeah? And of course, you know, the Israel people say, from glory to glory. That is what it means from one level of faith. You are here at this level of faith. So this is revealed to you. You continue. But if you fall here and stay down, then you never get up. And so, don't focus. And then, unfortunately, what can we do this like then to write the pastor? And what does Paul say? Paul says in the future, the previous thing is to I bless God to go to win the prize because has called me heaven for in Christ Jesus. I press on. I'm focusing on Christ. So, you fall to that and you continue as you go. You say, I cannot do it anymore. And my God, I will start to me. I cannot do it anymore. It's too difficult. And then he says, I got to in Korea and said, I am here. And then I found a tweet. I found a tweet to buy, you know, bicycle supporters. You know, this is one of the wheels, right? And the Holy Spirit is like a bicycle supporter. Because you get to the point where you've learned it now, you've learned to work, but somehow you still fall. So you see some supporters so that now you can be able, but Christ is here and the Lord is here, watching you, speaking to you in your spirit and letting you know what you're so need to be. And you can do it. Because Philippians so much that this is, I can do all things to Christ which me. So what are the things that helps you to remain focused? The next, next um, um, slide shows a uh, cross. So I, I got this from, from, from um, someone, and this is a very beautiful thing. Bible, study, prayer, fellowship, testimony. Very simple, but Jesus at the center. If Jesus is at the center of the cross that we are talking about, and Joshua just, just said, this book of the Lord will not be passed from my mouth. I'm going to take day and night. You study the word of the Lord because you are focused on Jesus. You pray always. But it's not that it's just about studying and praying. Okay. The Bible says, do not forsake the assembly of the brethren. See, there are many people who say, I am a spiritual person. You know? I can stay every day and worship. This is a lie that is coming up in this last days. You cannot say everything you are, except for the reason. Do not forsake the assembly of the brethren in fellowship. Do you know why you're in fellowship? Because this relationship you're having you know, to God, to God is speaking to you from on top. You're praying as well. You need now the relationship is The relationship of Bible study and prayer is possible. Now you need a Right? We need a horizontal relationship. When you study and pray with other person, you search. When I was trying to do the challenges, you're like, but it seems like I'm going through the same challenge. Then you get, you know, stronger. Because you know that you're not alone. You know that you're not alone in the journey that you're making. That's why fellowship is important. But it's not just important, it has to be sharpened. That's what I was saying. I am sharpened. I am sharpened so great. You may read the Bible and, and, and pray, and actually have a very long view of our world. And you can pray it with you. And then the believer will say, Hey, my sister, my brother, this is not how this is actually. Let us read more, let us read the context. And then it's shaping you, it's shaping you to read it better, and I'll show you how to read it. If you read in your own size, in your own mind, if you have the Bible, you have the Bible, the Bible says that the heart is God. So if you think that you can by yourself attain 
We are going to close now, and I invite the congregation to stand as we sing, because.